Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Welcome back to another episode of Titanium Man Garage. And uh, right behind me is going to be my next project. And I love the backstory on this thing. Uh, the guy had brought it into the dealership. Uh, he thought it was a camshaft. Uh, it turned out uh, they called him back, told him they needed to adjust the timing. Uh, it was running rough when he brought it in. And um, after they monkeyed with it, and 1200 bucks later, he got it back. And guess what? It's not running. So he got fed up and decided to sell it to me for 1200 bucks, and I'm going to figure it out. Uh, my guess is if they went through the timing, unless they screwed it up, uh, it's probably a CDI or there's got to be a carb issue. So I'm interested in finding out what is really wrong with this thing and prove the Polaris mechanics wrong, which won't be too hard. All right, so where do we start? So we're looking for fuel, we're looking for spark, compression, and I forgot the fourth thing. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pull the uh, black wire off the CDI, pull the boot off the spark plug, throw another spark plug on there, see if I got spark. Uh, from there, I'll go down to the fuel, check the carb, check the fuel lines. Um, I'm kind of hoping it's just the, uh, the CDI. But. All right, so what are the four things that are needed to start an engine. Spark, fuel, compression, and timing. Let's troubleshoot this thing and narrow down what's going on with it. Alright, so we got spark, so that rolls out the CDI. Alright, so it's hard to read uh, with a compression tester to check your compression because the decompression ball on the cam opens the exhaust valves a little more so it uh, doesn't give you a good reading on the compression tester. What I like to do, and me just from being experienced, I can kind of tell just by putting my finger over a hole, if I got uh, good compression, something spitting out of the spark plug hole, then uh, I'm good with that. Usually if the cylinder's bad or the rings on the piston are bad, you'll know right away. So I'm gonna crank this over, check the compression. Stick my finger down the spark plug hole. And it is, uh, it's puffing up. <clears throat> so I'm gonna rule out compression on that one. Okay, so we got spark. We've got uh, what we think is compression. Let's pull the fuel line off the carb because it could be a faulty fuel pump or vacuum or it could be a diaphragm in the carb. So we're going to check that out. If you watched my video on the 6x6, uh, the six six, I had mentioned something about uh, using an auxiliary fuel tank to bypass any fuel related issues, fuel pump, crap in the tank. Well, that's interesting. I found a bolt laying there. I found a bolt laying there from when they must have took this off and checked the timing. Nice. And as I hook this up, there is fuel leaking all over the place. Um, looks like it's coming from the carb boot. All right, I'll have to say I've never seen this before. That's the carb boot, the carburetor. When I hit the key, watch this. Yeah, needle and seats leaking, car boots leaking, which is probably why it was running rough in the first place. So there you have it. All right, so I want to check that fuel filter, see how that's working. You can tell it's dripping gas already. I'm gonna see if it pumps up. There is gas just shooting out of that carb boot. So 
Is the uh, needle and seats leaking going into the uh, cylinder and it's blowing out the carb boot. So yeah, that carb boot's bad. The needle and seat and the carb's bad. Uh, I could probably throw in and, uh, another boot. Maybe that'll cure okay, my problem. Okay, so I got compression. I've got spark. I've got gas, as you see, in <coughs> shooting out of the carb boot and uh, shooting out of the fuel lines. What does that leave us with? Timing. So that means they might have screwed something up. I still got to go through that carb and replace the carb boot because uh, the needle and seat are leaking. I think gas is shooting out the carb, so that's telling me the timing's off. So I'm going to see how far this mechanic went with this uh, adjusting the valve lash. Uh, I want to see if there is something wrong with the woodruff key in the flywheel. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if he just took this nut off and looked through the hole to see if the timing was on or if he actually took the cover off and did it the right way. So we'll find out. So I got the pull start cover off, and as you can see, all the rust has been cleaned off the flywheel. Uh, I mean, I can tell there has been some work done to this. Uh, it has been cleaned off. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a spark plug, and there is a T mark right here. Line that up and uh, check my valve lash. I got my T facing up where it's supposed to be in the right position on the flywheel. I'm going to put a white mark on it. And so far this gear, which is very clean, that looks like that's in the right position. So I'm going to take this cover off and check the valve lash. I got all the bolts off. That will do it without removing the gas tank. And that is the old gasket. So, you're getting to wonder if he actually took it to a Polaris mechanic. You know, it was a, somebody that wrenched on things, or because normally they would replace this gasket. and. Of course they charge you an arm and a leg for it, unless they were skimping out. So now I'm going to check the valve lash. The valve lash for the intake is tight. So that means the intake's actually opening sooner than it should. Alright, so we got spark, we got fuel, we got compression, at least that I know of. So what does that leave us with? Ding, 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 ding. Timing. You know what that means. The owner was right, and he got robbed by the mechanic, because look what I found. A bad camshaft. The exhaust lobe is worn off on the camshaft. Um, why when he brought it in, they only adjusted the valve lash and then gave it back to him, I don't know. So this right here is the decompression uh, ball, and when this cam rotates, this spins. Look at that. It's not even moving like it should. So that's supposed to pop back in. When this spins from velocity, this ball is supposed to go in, but this doesn't even turn. So that's not even working right. There's something messed up with this cam. So I had people message me and say, hey, where do you get your aftermarket cams? What's a good aftermarket cam? Um, I don't buy them. I bought one a couple years back ago, and I wasn't real thrilled about the rockers. Um, they seemed to go on real stiff, and they were tight. Um, so what I do is I buy uh, used cams from eBay. Uh, I also have, like, five engines laying around with... Uh, either fried pistons or bad water pumps, so I'll uh, rob the rockers and the cams out of them. So it just so happens 
Got a box of goodies right here. Try to show this to you. I got a nice set of rockers. Yeah, I got a good cam. It's got a nice lobe on there for the exhaust lobe. That's the way it's supposed to look. This spins like it should. Decompression ball goes up and down like it should. So I always talk about mechanical specs. What, uh, what are the specs on a cam? Anything below 1.28, I believe it is. And I've got 1.296. So that cam's good. It's in its mechanical limits. If it was, I think it's less than 1.28, like I wouldn't use it. Um, that's a really good cam and the rockers are good, so I'm gonna throw that in and get this bad boy fired up. So another question I'd like to answer is, I've had people contact me about uh, why is their ATV starting hard? Uh, why when they pull the pull rope that it seems to pull really hard? Well, it's all about that decompression ball. After a while, these get worn out, they get rusty, they get stiff, um, whatever makes them stick, they get stuck open. And then when you go to pull start it, it pulls really hard past that ball. So either you gotta replace the cam, or you just kinda deal with it. Uh, you can pull the starting rope slowly, just till you get past the ball, and then hit the starter key and she should spin over, or you replace the cam. Uh, choice is yours. Now, why did this cam go bad? Uh, like I said earlier in the video, the car boot was sucking in air, so I'm thinking it ran lean, it got hot, it probably uh, wrecked the cam. I just installed the new cam and I put the chain tensioner on and one of the most important things is after you do that you want to move the chain back and forth let the tensioner do its job push down it's spring loaded from moving the flywheel back and forth it'll actually push down on the tensioner sometimes you can spin it around a couple times just to make sure it's doing its job And then put it back at top dead center, put your rockers down, check your valve lash, put everything back together, you should be good to go. All right, first try starting it with the new cam, let's see what happens. I got some fuel in there. Put a new car boot on it yet. Problem solved. There you have it, folks. It's all done. Thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe. And like always, till next time.